Hello there. So for this exercise we got this space B that's going to be the set of functions that map from the reals to the reals. So basically are defined everywhere on the real line and maps to real numbers. So we got this uh, set of functions and we have defined two operations. So in this case, in this space, the sum operation is defined in this way, f plus g, applied to the x because the function will be fx plus gx. And you can notice that we can write this as a one function h of x, and because this function g is defined on all the reals, and f is also defined on the reals, that implies that h will be also a function from the reals to the reals. Therefore, h is also part of b, and we need to keep that in mind. Then we have defined here the um, multiplication of these vectors by an scalar. In this case, k is a real number, and the multiplication is defined just as taking k times the function. So this again we can redefine as some function of x, and this function will be also be mapping from the reals to the reals because k is just a real number multiplying a real number so again this is just taking real numbers to real numbers so it doesn't affect anything and here again this is an element on v why it is why is this important well because we need to show that v is a vector space and for that we need to show that the both operations that we have uh, defined here are closed. That means that if you pick two elements on this on, on the vector on the vector space V, you obtain also an element on V, and that's what this H is saying. H is the definition of the sum of these two functions that are part of P, and the sum also is an element of P. So that means that the summation is closed that is related with the first axiom of the vector space. And here, related with the uh, multiplication by scalars, this also is an element on V, so that means that the sixth axiom is satisfied of the, the axioms of the vector space. So we need just to keep going with the other axioms. The next axiom is related with the commutativity of the sum of this uh, sum op operation here. So f plus g, taking the definition of how is defined this sum, is just f of x plus g of x. And remember that f and g are just maps from the reals to the reals. It means that you pick some real number and you it returns a real number. So these two are real numbers after evaluating at each x. And that means that we can commute these two functions. And we obtain g of x plus f of x. And this, as you can see, is just the definition of g plus f x. So the functions commute. The next property is the associativity. So let's pick the left hand side. So we got f plus g plus h. And then we just need to apply the definition of the sum of, of, of uh, this element on, on b. So this will become f x plus g plus h x so we we apply the definition of the sum at the first level so we obtain f of x and g plus h of x and then we apply the definition of the sum of this on this part so we we obtain f of x plus g of x plus h of x now let's see what happened with the right hand side. So now we got here f plus g plus h. 
and this after applying at the first level the definition of the sum of these functions of these elements of the vector space you obtain f plus g plus h and then we apply here the definition of the summation so we end with f of x plus g of x plus h of x and as you can see these two expressions here are the same so it satisfied the associativity property the next is the neutral element or the zero vector on v so remember that v are functions is a set of functions that take values from the reals to the reals and is defined everywhere so we need to find a function in this case the zero function defined as zero for all the values x on the reals okay so for every value that you pick on the real line you obtain a zero and this zero vector should satisfy this property if you sum the zero to an any function f you obtain again f so the first thing what I have uh, done here is that this function the zero function is defined for all the values on the real line that means that this function is part of B and the next thing that we need to do is show that satisfy this property so f plus the zero function is equals to f of x plus the zero function but we know that the zero function is zero everywhere that means that we got here f of x plus a zero but this at the end is just the function f so we have proved this property therefore it satisfied the fourth axiom the existence of the uh, null or zero vector the next is to prove that the inverse exists on this uh, space V so given any F we need to define an inverse that will be unique such that it satisfy this property here when we sum these two functions together we obtain the zero, uh, the zero vector or in this case the zero function so I'm going to define minus F as minus the function itself just put in a minus sign so when we define in this way minus f of x as minus f we can see clearly that this is still a, f uh, a function so minus f itself is a function that take elements from the real line and map it to the real line so that means that is part of the set of v so that's the first first thing and the next is to show that it satisfies this condition here so let's pick f plus minus f I'm going to write here again so we got f ma plus minus f this is equal applying the definition of the, of the summation is f of x plus minus f of x and here we got the definition of minus f of x this is just f of x minus f of x and this equals to zero for all the x on the real line but which function is zero for for everybody on the real line that's the zero function and the zero function is unique so that means that this indeed is equals to the zero function therefore the seven the fifth axiom is satisfied let's go with this seventh axiom so in this case k is an scalar so k is an scalar okay so it's just a real number so let's see how it's going this f plus g x so first we apply the definition of the uh, multiplication by scalars at this level so we got k times f plus g x 
and then we apply the definition of the uh, of the summation on this space. So we got k that multiplies to f of x plus g of x. So these are real numbers. The are, uh, this is also a real number, and k is a real number. So we can distribute on this bracket. So we got k f of x plus k g of x. And you can see that this is a definition of kf x plus kg x, what we wanted to, to show. So, yes. The next is uh, kind of similar, but now we are distributing the function on. On, on the parentheses of uh, scalars. So here k and m are the scalars. So let's start. k plus m f x. Here k plus m will be considered just a one scalar because the sum of two real numbers is a real number so we are going to consider this as a only one uh, scalar and what we obtain after applying the definition of the scalar multiplication on, on this uh, vector space we obtain k plus m times the function and this is a real number that we can distribute on this parenthesis and we obtain k f of x plus m f of x and what happened is that this and this is the definition of kf plus mf. The ninth axiom. So here we got k times mf x. So here again. We are going to apply the definitions of the of the operations of this space from the outsider from outside most uh, parentheses and then going with the inner parentheses. So applying here the definition, we obtain k times the function m f x, and then we apply again here the definition. So we obtain k, m, f, x, and you can see that here we got these two will be just one scalar. So we can group them and we obtain k, m, k, f, f, f of x, and then this is just what we want. k, m, f, x. So it's also satisfied. And the last one is quite trivial, is just the identity. So 1 f of x is equals to 1 times the function, and it's just the function itself. So it's true. So we have shown that this space V together with the uh, that uh, addition operation and the, the multiplication with the scalars satisfy the 10 axioms of a vector space, that means that this space V is a vector space.